In this video, we're going to find the absolute extrema of a function on the closed interval. This function, by the way, is going to be uh, f of x is equal to 4 over x plus tangent of pi x over 8. And, it's bring, and our interval that we're going to be considering this on is the closed interval 1 comma 2. Okay, and so uh, we do have a theorem available to us that says that in the extreme values, so this is the extreme value theorem, if f is continuous on the closed interval, then f has both a minimum and a maximum on the interval, and so we are asked to find those. All right, now here's the problem. Minimum and maxima can occur at the endpoints, or there can be relative versions of them that occur at critical points. So we need to do three things. Number one, we need to evaluate the function at the endpoints. Number two, we need to test to see if the derivative is actually smaller, or better yet, if a critical point exists at all. All right, so let's tackle the first thing, uh, the first thing here. One, find f of one and f of two f of 1 is going to be the more difficult, so I'm going to go ahead and do that first. f of 1 is equal to 4 over 1 plus tangent of pi over 8. The reason I said it was more difficult is pi over 8 is a half angle. We don't have a good value for that, so if you want to get a, um, use a calculator and get something that's close enough, uh, then you can do that in, in a decimal format. However, if you're like my students, they love to have exact values, mostly because I make them, but, you know, whatever. All right, so 4 plus tangent of pi over 8. Now, the problem here is that we have a half an angle. If we had pi over 4, we'd know that was 1. But now, if we can apply a half angle formula of some sort, we could find that. All right, so let's look at one. Uh, I'm going to derive this out of the power reduction formula for tangent squared which says that tangent squared can be rewritten as 1 minus cosine of 2 theta over 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. If I multiply both the top and the bottom by 1 minus cosine 2 theta, 1 minus cosine 2 theta, all right, well, then that's going to take me to 1 minus cosine 2 theta, that quantity squared. This is going to give me a difference of two squares, 1 minus cosine squared 2 theta. Now, that's tangent squared theta. So if I take a look at this then, I can say that tangent, now this goes to sine squared 2 theta by Pythagorean identity. Tangent of theta, then, is equal to 1 minus cosine 2 theta over sine of 2 theta. So now we have an angle reduction formula. If I get a half angle, I just double it and throw it into this formula. So that's going to give me 4 plus tangent, remember, is sine over cosine. However, we now have this, so we have 1 minus cosine of pi over 4 divided by the sine of pi over 4. When we evaluate these, we're going to get 4 plus 1 minus the square root of 2 over 2 divided by the square root of 2 over 2, which gives us 4 plus 2 over root 2 minus 1, and that's invert and multiply, which is going to give us uh, if we uh, get common denominators and rationalize the denominator in that, it's 4 plus 2 root 2 minus 2 all over 2. Remember, this is all just for f of 1. And so f of 1 is equal to 4 plus root 2 minus 1, and it's over 1, which is really just 3 plus root 2. So there's f of 1, 
f of 2 is quite a bit easier. It's 4 over 2 plus the tangent of pi over 4. Tangent of pi over 4 is 1, and so you get 2 plus 1, which is 3. So those are the two endpoints. Now we have to search for the derivative. So we take a gander, just make sure we've get, okay, we've got our function. Our function here, let's rewrite it, is 4 over x plus the tangent of pi x over 8, which means our derivative is going to be negative 4 over x squared plus secant squared pi x over 8 times the derivative of what's inside, which is pi over 8. So here we use the power rule for the first, the sum rule for uh, for the sum of two functions and taking the derivative. We had to know that tan the derivative of tangent was secant squared, and we had to use chain rule, all in the same problem. But we got there, so that's fine. Now, if there are relative extrema that occur here, they must occur at a critical point. That means that either the derivative is zero or the derivative does not exist. And we are only having problems when x is zero, which is not in our, um, or when, uh, by the way, when secant, uh, when x is four. Four would be another issue spot. But those two are not in our closed interval, which is one comma two. And so we don't have to consider that. We do have to look though for um, for a zero value. So the question is, is this ever true? Is the derivative ever zero? Now the best way to do this, quite frankly, is going to be put it in your calculator. You can spend half a day working this thing out by hand if you want to. Ultimately, you're going to come up with this, no, it never equals zero. Okay, never equals zero. So in that case, then, our extrema are, in fact, the endpoints. These are our extrema. And that's the way I'd approach this problem. We had to use, we had to derive a, a half angle formula for tangent. We checked the, the values at the endpoints. We took the derivative and we asked yourself, is the derivative equal to zero anywhere in that interval? The answer was no. So, and we did that on the calculator, not by hand. So that means that the extrema are in fact the endpoints. And so we can state that um, the absolute maximum is at uh, 1 comma 3 plus root 2 and the absolute minimum minimum is at the point 2 comma 3 and there we have it